Good evening, friends of mine. It's another Thursday, and to me, every day above ground is a good day because it's another day that the Lord has made, and yet it is another opportunity for us to use our personalities, our temperaments, our gifts and talents to glorify Him mm -hmm. and to be thankful. It's Brother Julius Jackson on the Just Word show, and of course, the most beautiful person I know and the reason why I am always going to be more blessed than you are. My wife, Lysandra, is here with me. She's going to be blessing and sharing with us as she always has been. We're thankful, friends, that you allowed us to come into your cars and your, your living rooms or your offices or wherever it is that you listen to Awesome God Radio and The Just Word Show. Uh, even whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube, we're thankful for this opportunity. Here we just want to share and talk nuggets of truth from the Word of God because it is the greatest authority in the universe. In fact, it is the greatest authority on any topic that it addresses. We're not talking about opinion. That's why on many of the points we make, almost every point we make comes directly from the Word. We believe that it's important to read the word, to learn it, to memorize it, to study it, mm -hmm. as well as to rightly divide it, as I believe that's First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, um, that a workman needs not to be ashamed mm -hmm. if he rightly divides the word of truth in the book of Hebrews. We remain cognizant of what the word says in Hebrews, that the word is alive, in the King James Version, it says quick. The word quick is an old English word to say alive. Some newer versions say the word of God is alive and it is powerful. It is sharper yes. Yes. than any two-edged sword. <clears throat> so we're very, very thankful because we understand that God's word from the book of Psalms is worth thousands of gold and silver pieces. It is valuable. In fact, it is invaluable. You can't place a value on it. It is the greatest document that has ever been written. Listen, friends, 40, author, 40 authors on four different continents, over 2,000 years to finish it. These 40 authors never knew each. Most of them did not know each other. Uh, 66 books. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful, beautiful material. It is deep. And it has the depths of all wisdom, yet it is written that most sixth graders could understand it. Mm. So we're very, very thankful that we have an opportunity to share from the word of God. I'm getting ready to turn it over to my wife. She is going to give us a word <laughs> of news, just word now. She's going to give us a word of news She's going to bless us, and then we're going to take a break. When she finishes, we're going to come back, as we promised last week, yes. on Philippians chapter 1 and verse 1. I'm telling you, friends, there is a nugget of truth there that you don't want to miss. It is a deep, heavy nugget of truth. Just in that one verse, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 1, right after the break, but right now, uh, you're going to get a word of news from Lysandra. Yes, and again, we thank you so much for joining in today. I wanted to give a special uh, thanks and shout out to my daughter, our daughter, Brianna Jackson. She's been sharing the uh, video every week on Facebook uh, with family and friends, as well as Dr. Loretta Jackson has been sharing uh, the video. And for those of you who've been tuning in each week um, to listen in and to hear the word um, and send words of encouragement. So thank you so much uh, for tuning in and staying connected with us. Um, just a couple of things I wanted to share with you. Um, you know, there's always so many things happening in the world, and sometimes it's it's difficult to choose what things to share, um, what things are will be most impactful and important, um, because there's so much information we're being inundated with all of the time. Um, I think these stories are, are both interesting and intriguing, um, and again, things that I think that uh, we have an impact in the world, um, even in our lives. 
And so I was reading the other day, uh, this actually happened a few weeks ago, um, or at least the, the beginning of the story, the beginning of the testimony happened a few weeks ago. Um, a woman walked into a, an abortion clinic um, in Mississippi, Mississippi, Jacksonville, Mississippi, and it's the only abortion clinic that's in the state. And she walked in, um, and this is a Thursday that she walked in. That Sunday, she was feeling ill, so she went to the ER, um, discovered that she was pregnant. So this is a young girl, a young teen, young mom, a soon-be mom, and uh, she discovered that she was pregnant. So she then went to this clinic a few days later um, to find out how far along, um, because she was contemplating not keeping the baby. So while there, she actually goes into labor. Can you believe that? She actually goes into labor. Uh, the doctors and nurses kind of sprung into action. Um, she delivered the baby um, that, that evening. Um, mom and baby are doing well. So I just wanted to report that because sometimes we miss those good news stories that life won out on wow. that. I remember probably about 10 years ago, I read a book. Um, it was a beautiful book. Someone actually had given me the book as a gift um, written by a young lady by the name of Gianna Jensen. She is a young woman um, born in the late 70s, um, and she was uh, a young girl. She's, she's a young woman that tells her story. Her mom, who was 17, got pregnant and tried to abort her um, through a saline abortion, mm -hmm. but she survived. She survived it, mm -hmm. and she's wow. telling the story. She's a pro-life advocate. She has... Um, uh, many, many, many disabilities from the saline yeah. uh, abortion yeah. attempt. Uh, wow. She has cerebral palsy, and um, she's a disability rights activist. Um, but she has an awesome testimony for the Lord, um, and it's a beautiful book. And she tells the story um, about just all that the Lord has done in and through this testimony. So we're praying for both the mom and baby um, in Jackson, Mississippi. The Lord <coughs> would use this for an awesome testimony. Um, to impact other lives as well. Wow. And the other news I wanted to share with you. Gianna uh, we, Jensen. Gianna Jensen, yes. Gianna Jensen. Yes, and she's been all around the country um, sharing the story and sharing um, parts of her life. Um, she's now married and has children. Um, it's just wow. a beautiful story. Um, it didn't start out as a beautiful story. Um, it was kind of a gory story, actually, um, but the Lord turned it for, out for her good. Um, so it's a beautiful story um, written by Gianna Jensen. Uh, she was born actually in uh, Los Angeles, California back in 1977. And so the other story I wanted to share with you, uh, we talked a little bit about last week about what's happening kind of in the Supreme Courts and in the federal court systems regarding um, some of our national or our Christian freedom or our civil liberties. And so today uh, I found out, interesting story, that in God we trust, you know, that phrase that's on our currency that's been there since the 1800s, that's been there since uh, Abraham Lincoln has been president. Well, someone decided that it was an infringement and it was unconstitutional. Um, it was an infringement on their own personal non-theistic uh, beliefs. And so it should be removed. It's advertising Christianity. Um, there is no such thing as one God and this nation doesn't trust in God. Um, and of course, the judge um, basically rejected the lawsuit. Um, but just know that there are people um, who are trying to upturn and, and, and turn these things around that have been in place for many, 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 many decades and generations. Um, but again, the Lord won in that case as well. Wow. Wow. Praise God. Um, I'm glad that the Lord won out in that case. Um, I wasn't aware of that. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, he filed the case back in May of 2017, um, so it takes a while in that, the court system. Yeah. It takes a while yeah. um, for these cases to be litigated and to be heard um, and for the judge to make a decision. But the judge ruled and rejected the case. Well, if you know, I think about this thing that uh, he says that it's unconstitutional to have it there. I think the most interesting thing about that is he must have not read any of the writings of the founding fathers mm -hmm or even glanced at any of the founding documents because God is all over all of the founding documents. And it literally Amen. says God, G-O-D, on all of the founding documents. Um, he argues so, and he many of the writings, including uh, guys like Benjamin Franklin, who was a theist, and he did not necessarily believe in the Christian, Judeo-Christian God, mm -hmm. Benjamin Franklin, at least he honored the fact 
that that there is something that needs to hold our society accountable. Yes. Uh, there's, I, I don't know if it's God. I don't know if it's Jesus. I don't know what it is, but there needs to be something. That's just Benjamin Franklin. There needs to be someone somewhere that we need to look to for mm-hmm. accountability because yes. he understood, as many of the founding fathers did understand in John chapter 3, that men love, excuse me, John chapter 1, Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. I'm not necessarily saying that every human is evil, but I'm saying that every human is inherently yes. not good. Mm-hmm. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 3 makes it very clear. There is none righteous, mm-hmm. no, not one. And there, the next verse says there is none that seeks after God, no, not one. Uh, there is none that does good, no, not one. The book of Isaiah chapter 53, I believe, says, all we are like sheep have gone astray. We mm-hmm. have turned everyone to our own way. We need accountability, whether or not you call it God or whether right. or not it's w- what you understand or believe yeah. as being God or the higher power. But as a rule, humans need accountability. Yes. Benjamin Franklin and all of the founding fathers mm-hmm. understood that. Uh, apparently our atheist friend did not. The interesting thing about it is even the word talks about atheism. Mm-hmm. Here's what the word says in the book of Proverbs. Mm-hmm. The fool, <laughs> the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Mm-hmm. That That's the interesting thing. The word, And of course, the word is the final authority on every topic it addresses. That you would literally have to be a fool to think that there is no God. We look at Romans chapter one, it makes it very clear that uh, that there is no excuse as saying that yes. there is no God because the universe did not come into being by mm-hmm. itself. Mm-hmm. Nature itself tells you right. that there must have Declared been a creator. The of God. Yes. And that's in Psalms. Yes. Um, you know, that nature itself declares the glory of God. Mm-hmm. You know, you just looking at the handiwork of the universe. You just can't assume that it just happened. Mm -hmm. Someone had to do it. Someone had to make it. Someone had to design it. So we're thankful. Amen. We need to reserve and preserve and fight. Amen. For every semblance of freedom Mm -hmm. and, and any semblance of, of God that we have left in this country. So um, we're thankful in that particular case, how it turned out. Now, listen, friends, we are about to rev up. We're about to, uh, we, we, we're gassed up. We're about to rev up. We're revving our engines. Our seatbelts are on. Our helmets are on. <laughs> and we are ready to get into the word. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 1. That's the only part of the book of Philippians that we're going to read. But just in that verse, that single verse, mm-hmm. there is a major, major. I'm talking about 1849 San Francisco. Gold Rush, major nugget of truth in that verse. Um, so, so we're going to spend about a half an hour or a little, maybe a little bit more. We got time. We got left looking into the word. Get your pencils ready. Get your paper ready. Whether you like to take notes or whether you can just go to YouTube or Facebook and watch the video back and forth. But get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Philippians chapter one. And verse one, right after the break here on the Just Word Show.
Praise the Lord, friends. We're back on the Just Word Show. We have been talking about the book of Philippians last week, if you remember. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to give a little background, a little history. You can go to YouTube or Facebook and look at some of the things that we said about that. In fact, I encourage you, friends, to study the word for yourself. We want to give you the word. We want to drop nuggets of truth on you, but at the same time, we want to gently encourage you and push you to get to know the word for yourself. <clears throat> it's very important that we don't just rely on apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, Sunday school teachers, deacons, elders, or ministers to just be our only source of knowledge about the God that we claim to serve. Uh, particularly given the fact that there is a possibility, uh, in fact, there's a likelihood that you may encounter false teachers that may have deleterious motives in terms of why they teach what they teach. So I just want to encourage you to get to know the God of the Bible for yourself. Mm -hmm. You can read the book of Philippians. I did it earlier this week. In fact, I've done it multiple times, but earlier this week, it literally took me 25 minutes to go through the entire book. Um, and I'm not a fast reader. If you have a half an hour, that's as long as it takes to read a t to watch a TV show. Mm -hmm. You can read the whole entire book in a half an hour. You, Four chapters, it, yeah. And in fact, you can read it in less than a half an hour if you are a better reader. So, 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 praise God. Let's get into Philippians chapter one <clears throat> and verse one. There is lots of wealth of information and knowledge, riches. In just this one verse, mm. Paul and Timothy. Now, I'm reading the New King James Version. Listen to what it says. Bond servants <clears throat> of Jesus Christ um, to all pay special attention to the next word, to all the saints. Mm hmm in Christ Jesus, who are in Philippi with the bishops and deacons. Interesting thing, it mentions the saints first before it mentions the bishops and deacons. Almost as if to say, you are all a part of the same group. I do recognize the bishops and deacons, but they're saints just like the rest of the saints in Jesus Christ. But listen, listen, friends. I want to draw special attention to the word in verse 1, two words in verse 1. Number one, bond servants. Mm -hmm. and, and the second word is saints. Bond servants and saints. And, and just to give it a little bit of an alliterative feel, for those of you who English scholars, alliteration, alliterative feel, just change that word bond servants to slave. Let me get into the word bond servant for a minute. If you... If, you, if you're a student of the word, then you understand that the New Testament was written in Koine Greek because Koine Greek was the lingua franca of, and, and I believe that's even by divine provision. God wanted the Greek empire to be in place just so that the gospel could be spread and we could get into that. He also wanted the Roman empire to be in place during the time of Christ because they were the single empire who built the most roads during their time of being in charge they built so many roads and that made it just absolutely convenient for the gospel to spread mm -hmm. <clears throat> so listen to what the word says bond servant reason mm -hmm. why i bring up Koine greek is because in the greek that paul wrote he used the term doulos he would have said uh, Paul or Paulos in Greek, Timothy or Timotheus, and then he would have said doulos. Doulos literally means, and then he would have said Jesus Christ, which is Yesu Christos. That's how you say it in Greek. Doulos. Listen, friends. Doulos literally means slave. Paul is referring to himself and Timothy, he's referring mm -hmm. to them as being slaves. S I'm reading 
the New King James Version, it says bond servants. Mm-hmm. Some of your newer versions will say slaves. Mm-hmm. And that is the best way to translate that word. For those of our King James Version proponents, um, I want to say that, yes, the King James Version was a good version, but it was translated in 1611, or it was finished in 1611, mm-hmm. and some of the words have changed over the years. The best word there should be slaves. Mm-hmm. The word, the Greek word doulos is slaves. Paul and Timothy considered themselves slaves <clears throat> Of Jesus Christ. And it's very important that we look at that because it shows us how Paul viewed himself in relation uh, to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Lord is the best word because the one who is Lord is the one who's sovereign. Mm-hmm. The one who is the Lord is the one who is the boss. Mm-hmm. He's the one who gives the orders. Paul is considering himself a slave. Now, many passages in the New Testament use the same language, referring to the saints as being slaves. Funny, I said saints, right? That's one of our key words. As believers as being slaves. Now, many of you might be saying, hmm, (laughs) I don't consider myself a slave. Before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. But Paul and many of the believers and the biblical writers, Jude referred to himself as a slave in Jude 1 and verse 1. James referred to himself as a slave in James chapter 1 and verse 1. Peter referred to himself as a slave in the book of 1 Peter. There are many passages where God's people are referred to as slaves. And I think it's interesting that we need to look at this concept. Now, if you don't want to consider yourself a slave, let me just bring this point out. That if you don't want to consider yourself a slave to Jesus Christ, I would respectfully make a suggestion that you look and consider. Even if you're not a slave to Jesus Christ, you're still a slave of something Mm -hmm. or someone. Mm -hmm. In the book of Matthew, Jesus said you cannot serve or be a slave to God and money at the same time. Some of us are slaves to money. Hmm. Some of us are slaves to drug abuse. Some of us are slaves to anger. Some of us are slaves to lust lust and pornography Mm -hmm. or sexual promiscuity. Yes. You know, I think we need to put a quarter in the meter and park there for a minute. Many of us, even believers in the body of Christ, are not slaves to Jesus Christ. But there are, you know, there are many folks in the body of Christ. Now, we know we're not talking about the world, although we can talk about the world. When I say world, I mean those who are not believers. Mm -hmm. But there are many folks who are bound, I mean, in chains, Mm -hmm. fetters and chains, Mm -hmm. to their sex drive. Many of us have become victims of people who were enslaved enslaved by their sex drive. There are many folks listening who may have come out of relationships where the entire relationship was only based on sex. That's unfortunate because that has a myriad of negative implications. Mm -hmm. And we're talking Christians or nominal Christians and non-Christians. That's three categories. 
non-Christians, nominal Christians, and Christians. Hmm. But but my friend, I don't want you to feel as if I'm not being sensitive to the issue. There is gracious freedom. And there is gracious hope. I want you to get John chapter 8 and verse 32. Mm -hmm. Read John chapter 8 and verse 32. Read it all the way down to verse 36. And we're going to see what the Lord himself says. John chapter 8 and verse 32. All the way down to verse 36. While she's getting that verse, I want to share <coughs> that some of us are enslaved to our image of ourselves Mm -hmm. And how we portray to other people. Many of us um, have an image that we put out there, but at home we're miserable. Mm -hmm. We're depressed. Mm -hmm. Or even people pleasing. Um, some of us are enslaved to that. Uh, we would sell ourselves out, sell our friends out just to please certain people. Um, and so there are all kinds of different uh, traps and death traps that uh, we have the propensity to be slaves to. And slave to. Mm -hmm. And so I want to say with sensitivity and grace that some of us are enslaved to our children. Mm -hmm. To the extent that we love our children so much and we love our relationships with our children so much until we will do what dishonors God mm -hmm. in order to save face with our relationship with our children or some of us as gracious yet as stern as I can. Some of us are enslaved to our pastor's approval. Hmm. But friends, if you are a slave, you have voluntarily mm -hmm. or involuntarily mm -hmm. given up your interests and given up your will at the behest of someone else, the behest and the pleasure of someone else. I'm here only to serve my master. And I want to use this, I want to demonstrate an oxymoronic dichotomy. Oxymoronic dichotomy. In other words, we're talking about being slaves, as the word says, Paul and Timothy, mm -hmm. bond servants of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yet, on the oxymoronic tip, we're talking about being slaves that are totally free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is oxymoronic. That, that's oxymoronic because we're talking about slaves. I'm willingly or unwillingly placing myself under the authority. The governance. Yeah. The governance, mm -hmm. the lordship, mm -hmm. the servitude of someone else. I live just to serve you. Mm. But yet, my friends, living to serve Jesus Christ is the greatest freedom that you could experience. What does John chapter 8 and 32 say? John 8, 32 Down through 36. 36. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Verse 33. Then they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, Well, very truly, I tell you, everyone who's a sin, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free, free indeed. In and that's from the, the NIV version. That's the NIV version. Friends, we're about to take a break. We're going to come right back and we're going to talk about saints, slaves, and saints, but here 
is the question that I want to leave with you. Who is your Lord? Mm. Who are you serving? What are you slave to? Mm. Are you free indeed? I want to encourage you to read Romans chapter 6 in its entirety. We don't have time to go over it on the Just Words show. Maybe in the future we'll do a teaching and a study on Romans chapter 6. But listen, friends, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. indeed. This is Brother Julius on the Just Word show. We'll be back in a few minutes after this break.
This brother Jewelers, we're back on the Just Word show. It is very unfortunate. The time is flying by mm-hmm. so incredibly fast. I had past tense so much to share, and I still do have so much to share, but just not nearly enough time. To share it. As I look at Philippians chapter 1 and verse 1, there is a very special word there to all of the saints. And that is a very, very special word that I would like to drop a nugget on. Now, the word saint itself is used 97 times in the scriptures. And that's important because if the word, if God uses a term 97 times over and over again, it's repeated, then it's something Mm -hmm. we need to take note of. Mm -hmm. Um, 35 times in the Old Testament and 62 times in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Listen, the New Test, the Old Testament is three times as large as the Old Testament, but the word saints is used almost twice as much in the New Testament than in the Old Testament. Think about the implications. So in other words, we look at the term saints. Historically, and and from some theological perspectives, you'll know what I mean when I say it, that the term saints is a very special individual Mm -hmm. that had been canonized and had attained sainthood based off of an examination process of the person's life and is typically done posthumously. But that is not the way the word describes the saints. The word says to all of the saints Mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ who are in Philippi. These folks were not given canonical recognition posthumously these folks were saints now and the point that i'm making here friends is that when you give your life to jesus christ you are just as much of a saint now Mm -hmm. than anyone else ever will be it doesn't matter who does the ranking. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter who looks at the examination. Doesn't yes. matter who sits on the board. Right. Doesn't matter who, which, which pope or which archbishop, which group of cardinals come together. The word says that you, friends, are a saint mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. If that word is so special, particularly the 62 times that it's used in the New Testament, then let's look at what the word saints mean so that we can have the proper perspective and Mm -hmm. understand what should be our place as saints. The word saint itself, okay, obviously saint in English, but of course Paul wrote in Greek, Mm -hmm. that word is hagios, okay, to the saints. He's writing saints, hagios. Uh, those of us who are Bible readers, we un- or Bible students, rather, we should understand that the word hagios, listen to this right here. Listen carefully, friends. Hagios, pneumaticus. Pneumaticus come from the Greek word pneuma. Mm-hmm. Pneuma meaning air, breath, or wind. Does that make sense yet? Hagios pneumaticus, or we talk about something being pneumatic, we're talking about it being, using air in the process. The word hagios pneumaticus is a Holy Spirit in English. Think about that. Hagios is the Greek word for holy ones. So when Paul says saints as the word saints is used 63 times in the New Testament. Mm-hmm. That Greek word is hagios, literally meaning holy ones. Mm. That's what the word means. Paul then is calling these believers in Philippi, he's calling them yes. holy ones. What then does the word holy mean? Mm. 
Holy means taken and set aside to be separated. Think about the implications of that, friends. God is calling you and me separated ones and set aside Mm -hmm. as being special. It is not to be treated flippantly Mm -hmm. or lightly. Your new posture and your place as a believer in the body of Christ is that of a saint, a holy one, particularly in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 17, I believe the word says, Be ye holy Mm -hmm. or hagios because you're saints, Mm -hmm. uh, separated ones because the Lord is holy. It's a very special place with very special implications. If ever there was a reason to rejoice, then Mm -hmm. we ought to rejoice because God is saying we are saints. Yes. And I think the book of Acts, the book of Acts kind of kind of builds upon or it shares a story about how the Philippian church began. And I think it's important to read that in the Acts, the 16th chapter. You can even go back to the 15th chapter. Um, but the 16th chapter really kind of gives you the biography of the beginning of that church. And so when we're talking about the saints, who is Paul talking about? Who is he writing to? Who are some of the saints who are some of these people that you're calling saints? Well, we know one was a demon possessed girl. Yes. Did he cast a demon out of? They cast a demon out of. Some, that was some may not classify her as a saint, but she was a, a woman that walked around crying out, These men are bond servants day after day, and they're trying to show you the way of salvation. Albeit true, Paul didn't want that association. With and her. so, in his, in his godly anger, he cast the demon out. That's one of the saints. That he's writing to and in the, the jail- city of Philippi. And the jailer. And the jailer. The Philippian jailer. The Philippian jailer. Who he was, was about, in Philippi. Who was about to take his life after Paul and, Paul and Silas were singing and praying in the earthquake and the prison doors opened. That's one of the saints. And then Lydia, the entrepreneur, the Absolutely. businesswoman. Absolutely. So you're seeing the di- diversity here yes. in the body of Christ. You're seeing social economic barriers. Yes. They've been removed. Yes. These are the saints that he's referring to. Yes. So it's a beautiful missionary letter that Paul is writing, and the book of Acts really gives you an eye, a really a snapshot into the people and the lives and how the how the the church of uh, Philippi began. So it's important to have that historical knowledge too to really begin to um, peel away the layers and understand um, hmm. how beautiful this really is. Beautiful, beautiful point that you can see the diversity of the people that she just brought out. We know who some of the saints are in the book of Philippians because Mm -hmm. we know that the jailer Mm -hmm. and the word says his whole house got saved. Yes. And Lydia, they're probably members of the church of Philippi Mm -hmm. because that all happened in Philippi. Mm -hmm. We look at the, the Lydia and we look at the demon possessed girl. Mm -hmm. So now let's look at Romans chapter one and verse seven. There is a verse here. Listen carefully. Get us Ephesians Ephesians and Colossians, let's get ready to read them quickly before we close out. Romans chapter 1 and verse 7, to all who are in Rome, listen friends, beloved of God, called to be saints. Mm. Very special word about your new condition as being believers in the body of Christ. I don't care what you did before Christ. Mm. God is calling you a saint and you are beloved of God. What does Ephesians say? Ephesians chapter two and verse 18. 18 to 20. Yes. Listen carefully, friends for through him. We both have access in one spirit to the Father. We have access to the Father now. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens. We're no longer strangers and aliens. 
we have access to the Father. But you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Fellow citizens with the saints. This is the way God describes you, friends. Mm, <laughs> that's good news. A little more. Built on the foundation. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets and Jesus Christ mm -hmm. being the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. In other words, what you are a part of, friends, has a long standing pedigree and history. There is a huge building built upon it, a very strong foundation with Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone in verse 20. Is that verse 20? Yes. What does turn to Colossians? Mm -hmm. Colossians but think, right? friends, about the tremendous, tremendous blessing that you have walked into. Mm -hmm. as being believers, bond servants or slaves and saints. Mm -hmm. What does Colossians say? Colossians 1 verse 11 through 13, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might. So Listen, that, friends. So that you well, may wait a minute. have. I want you to hear this, friends. Being strengthened by his might and glorious power. So that. L listen, friends. There is no reason why you should lack strength. Mm. All the strength you need is by his might and his, listen, glorious power. Mm -hmm. So that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the father who has qualified you. Watch this. Not that you may have endurance and patience, but that you may have great yes. endurance and patience. As much as you need, and then still some left over. Overflow. Go ahead. Giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his the holy people. The inheritance of holy people in that version. Yes. Saints. Yes. God's chosen. God's chosen people. The saints, the holy ones in her version, which is still a good version. Don't this is the I, NIV NIV. Listen, friends, you're chosen. <laughs> You've been pulled out. Listen, you're a member yes. of the church. I love that word church in Greek. Yes. Ecclesia. Ek. Can you hear it? E.K. Yes. Literally mean out. And we can't forget verse 13. What for he has say? rescued us from the dominion of darkness. And brought us into, into the, the kingdom. kingdom of his dear son. It's powerful. And we're just in the greeting in the book of Philippians. That is absolutely incredible. And pulled us out of mm, darkness. Yeah. And brought us into the kingdom of his dear son. And you got endurance by his great glorious strength. In fact, you have great endurance and patience. And this is all. We're still in verse one. We're still in verse one. Chapter one, verse one. And I know there's a tendency to skim past these greetings, kind of like you would perhaps do with the genealogies, you know, thinking they're perhaps maybe insignificant. But if you believe, you know, Second Timothy three and 16, that the word of God is inspired, every word is inspired and it's for teaching um, and reproof and for toward righteousness then every word is significant. Talk. Every word is important. Talk. That's it. And so I was just thinking how sometimes there's a tendency to kind of skim past those things that we, that we assume don't have much meaning um, or give much life, especially in this hurried life we live. But if every word is God-inspired um, and it's for reproof and teaching toward righteousness, then it's significant, whether it's be because it's prophecy, whether it's history, yes. or whether it's just showing that how God is um, concerned about the details of man's life. It's significant. Slaves and saints, friends of mine, it's very, it's very unfortunate. It's 758. We have to close out the Just Word show. But friends, since you love the show so much, <laughs> 
Since you love the show so much, Facebook it, YouTube it, text it to somebody, let folks know that we're here on the Just Word Show. It's Just Word. We come to inform you. We come to encourage you. We come to bless you. We're not coming to tear you down, although some of us need to be torn down and (laughs) rebuilt rebuilt by the Lord. We need to be rehabbed and made over. (laughs) But that's not our goal. Well, sometimes it is. Let me take that back. Sometimes that is our goal. But 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 praise God, we're so glad that you allowed us to come into your cars, yes. your living rooms, your offices, wherever it is that you listen to Awesome God Radio and the Just Word Show. Listen, friends, Romans chapter 15 and verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope Hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit. Word of God, speak by mercy me. Until next week, God bless you. God bless you.